For those of you who are coming to watch these videos for the first time, I wanted to say thank you and welcome. For those who have been following these and watching these film breakdowns, even going back to 2019 uh, in those long Twitter threads, I wanted to say thank you as well. I felt like this would be a great way for me to connect with you guys um, and go behind the scenes, a little peek behind the curtain on kind of the reasonings that go into um, some of the tweets that I do put out there um, and, and kind of show my work and show my homework. Um, I think it'd be a, a lot easier way for me to connect with you guys uh, and be able to talk and explain um, and, and be there while games are going on, after games are going on, whatever it may be, the things that I say on radio. Um, I felt like this is just a perfect platform um, to do that. So for those, again, um, that have seen these uh, on Through the Keyhole or prior to that, um, going to be very similar. And you guys are going to see something similar to this every single week. Um, I'm very much looking forward to doing this again for the entire 2022 season. So thank you guys again for watching. Hello and welcome to the first Oklahoma film review of 2022. For those who have watched in the off season or went back and watched the videos I posted over the last couple of weeks, uh, the Jeff Levy one with Ole Miss and Arkansas from 2021, uh, you'll see a lot of similarities with the offense. But with the defense, there are some new stuff that I will get into uh, that I was a little bit surprised by um, and some things to definitely uh, keep track of as we go through here early in the season. Uh, but Oklahoma got the ball first. As people that have watched this before will know, I'll go through the first couple drives to try to get a feel of the game itself. Uh, and then it'll go more sporadic as the game goes on. Uh, but obviously, I'm going to try to make these a little bit quicker for you uh, and be able to try to still tell the whole story, um, and, but be efficient in the way that I do it. But here we are on the, the second play of the game. Um, Oklahoma just took the shot downfield to Marvin Mims. And the whole talk with Jeff Levy coming over to Oklahoma uh, was the RPO game that he's going to bring. Uh, and really how easy this is um, for the quarterback uh, and the things that and the positions that Jeff Levy puts his quarterbacks in uh, to be successful. So, uh, the, again, the second play of the game here, it's second and 10. And, and it's really no surprise that um, this is the stuff that Dylan Gabriel did really, really well at UCF. Um, so, again, we're probably going to see um, some of we're going to see a lot of similarities uh, in the things that we saw then that we're probably going to see now um, at OU. Uh, but this RPO is, again, very, very easy on the quarterback. Um, and Dylan Gabriel already kind of has a good idea of what he's going to do before they even motion Braden Willis in. Let's see here, he starts scanning the field. So he's looking to the right, all right, making sure these guys are all lined up right. Make sure you're there. Okay, your two guys are over there. Let's get motion in. They're just going to run an RPO. Hand it off. And his, Gabriel's eyes are going to be here. Let's, let's go back through prior to the motion. See where his eyes are going. If they're not going to rotate these linebackers over, there's an area green here. So whenever they go play action, if this safety is not rotating back, that means this safety is, which means Drake Stoops is going to have, he has leverage here inside already. That means this play um, should work. And Dylan Gabriel knows that probably before Braden Willis even motions, motions in. Ball snaps right on target. Great yak potential here. But again, very easy on the quarterback. And Gabriel, you can tell he's locked in and he knows what he's looking at right off the bat. Don't motion this linebacker over. Safety stays home. He rotates back. And it's right there. Now, I'm not really going to walk through the next play all that much. But I think I am going to note it and seeing the formation that they're in where they're stacked here uh, and have pretty wide splits, but these could even get wider. They're going to put these receivers out even on the opposite side of the 40 here, but just notice these stacks are going to get into it throughout the game. On the very next play, you're going to see something that I think we see multiple times in this game of, and we'll definitely take note of it. Just notice the switch concepts at the top. 
kind of looking at the play itself, I kind of think that they're going to turn this into a wheel at the top if this is how people play them. But I think Dylan Gabriel decided at about this point right now that this safety is in his back pedal and Marvin Mims is going to run by him. And he said, I'm just going to throw it. And he does. And that's what Dylan Gabriel does. He's got a strong arm. He's got good arm talent. And it works out. But they run this switch concept at the top a couple times. And they're going to run it here in a bit as well. Oklahoma was pretty vanilla defensively on Saturday. I was not surprised by that, but they were more aggressive in the spring game than they were on Saturday against UTEP. But pointed this out on Twitter earlier today, and I wanted to talk about it here. Obviously, when you go back into Clemson tape, there's at least some trends that I think are obviously going to carry over, and this is one of them. Notice the defensive tackles here, and notice how they widen out. Notice that something's coming, whether it's they're going to stunt somewhere, they're going to twist somewhere, linebackers are blitzing, There's a, something, something's happening. If they spread these defensive tackles out, and I think this is scouted, so teams know this, and they <laughs> when you go back to last year, specifically towards the end of the 2020-21 year for Clemson, uh, it was more. It was become apparent that Brent Venables didn't really care because people just couldn't stop it. But something's coming, and so obviously you see here they get widened out, and David Aguayu run blitzes, and then they end up forcing a little short catch. But something's coming. That just little movement there. Something is happening. couple plays later thought this was pretty interesting utep gets into 12 personnel with two tight ends on the field and this is how venables lines up I and mean, this is as old school oklahoma old school football as you get i'm bet brent venables is happy that he was able to put this on tape because wouldn't surprise me if he did this against the likes of a team like Kansas State or Iowa State and Baylor that play with heavy personnel on the field. Just interesting. Just don't remember if I saw this much from him at Clemson uh, in 2021 or any of the years prior, but just thought it was noticeable. This was the first time that we saw them get into something like this, and UTEP still has two tight ends on the field. And they're going to show it a little bit here. They check at the line of scrimmage and they get into something different. The fullback comes over here. They get into a little unbalanced formation. But what Oklahoma was showing prior to that looks a little bit similar to what Jim Knowles did at Oklahoma State at times, which I think is really fun. And kind of a hat tip in itself. Clearly they were doing something. I just don't remember seeing this. They blitzed linebacker and Bowman and Jordan Kelly. This poor UTEP center did not have a good day. Here is the first big run of the game. And it's, again, a very similar formation. You see Braden Willis going to motion in. I'm sure they probably could have gotten something here on this backside if they had wanted to. And they may do it later in the game. But this looks like a variation of why insert. Typically, let's draw this up. Typically, Y insert would look like him blocking down, him blocking down, him blocking down, him inserting in and taking the mic out, him kicking out, him kicking out. But Braden Willis acts like he's going to do that, right? And then doesn't. And he kind of just waits and is patient to see which guy he's going to block. And I, I'm sure this is a schemed up and they understand this, but. 
I was looking for why insert to be run on Saturday, but and I think it's going to be something that's going to be a really good concept for Oklahoma this year. It's a good run though. Good blocks. Braden Willis does a really good job. He had a good Saturday. Here's this run from the back view. Fox always does a really good job with this. But you see, like, it looks like Braden Willis wants to maybe do something, but he also just picks up the trash, whatever's out there. This also could just be a zone reconcept where Braden Willis is leaving. Whichever man this is, he's leaving calm. And Gabriel's reading him. One takes a bad angle, it looks like. Works out well for Oklahoma. I mentioned a second ago about that switch concept. They go back to it pretty quickly here. And you can see at the top, it's really, really hard. But you can see how they're switching at the top here. And instead, it was Marvin Mims last time. That was on the outside. Marvin Mims is on the inside this time, which, again, just stuff to note. And they run that same concept that they ran earlier. He's running the post down the middle. He's running backside and running a comeback. And it's there, kind of like it was a little bit earlier, and it works out well for Marvin Mims. The very next play is super fun. They get into a quads look, and everyone is eligible. Eligible. Everyone here should be eligible. Little quads look. They do some scissors. Eric Gray, great hands. Worked really, really well. I'm going to check on make sure everybody's eligible here. Pretty sure. Good play. Quads into the boundaries are really, really fun. I'm team fun. Most of you will have noticed you didn't get a look at the reverse that Gavin Freeman scored on. Uh, I'm going to be focused a lot more on schemes and, and strategy uh, instead of breaking down players, at least on these. Um, but I will get into some things here and there. Uh, if it becomes a problem or if I need to talk about it, I will. Um, but obviously trying to isolate all the plays that I think are going to be important uh, moving forward. Um, and I'll go back and have clips of things if things do pop up. Um, but overall, just kind of, again, like I said, going to be a little bit more sporadic after the first couple of drives most weeks. Um, but just to kind of get a feel for where we're at. I'm just coming back to this play uh, here late in the first quarter. Uh, just look how spread spread out the defensive tackles are. I think this is interesting. You've got, I think, Marcus Stripling. And we're going to I'll figure out who well, the other one is. But obviously, something's coming here on the second eight. R. Mason Thomas and Marcus Stripling are on the field together here. Jalen Redmond, Jordan Kelly, David Aguebu. So something's coming, right? It's obviously just what I want to point out. It's a sim pressure. Looks like they're bringing five here with that linebacker, but he's going to be dropping underneath in case they get pressure. This is a bad Tackling was really, really good on Saturday. Thought they flew to the football well. And then I'm going to go back here, a couple plays, and note something. On this second and 15, and they did it on the third and long on the last drive, but a couple things. So second and 15, want to notice the front. They back out of this once they motion over. So Oklahoma's telling – UTEP they're in zone coverage right because no one's following with the guy in motion but I just want to notice alignment that's all I really care about they're in a deep deep here another deep safety corners way off look where to Sean White's at uh knows where the linebackers are at 
But Deshaun White was like earlier on the third down was like way off back in here. So obviously on obvious passing downs, Venables is at least early on, I'm not going to say this is like a obvious trend throughout the year, but pretty was pretty conservative against UTEP uh, in obvious passing situations. Here we are again in a second and five. Look at Reggie Grimes. Again, very intrigued about all this. UTEP's got both their tight ends on the field again, and this is something that they try. They end up batting down an RPO, Justin Broyles does. And again, just noting this stuff. 12 personnel again, and they get into this formation. UTEP's offensive line had a rough day. Right tackle Jeremiah Byers, I thought, had a pretty good day. Uh, but this is a play that I do want to note when talking about how well the defensive line, I think, obviously imposed their will a little bit on Saturday, which is obviously something that you want to see, even though it's to be expected. Just look at where this ball is snapped. And look at where the pocket ends up. And that's Jalen Redmond pushing that guy right back into the quarterback's lap. That's Jordan Kelly taking on a double and pushing them back. Just look how far back this pocket is. That's the 22. He's at the 29. I mean, the right tackle does a great job here. This should be fine. Should be able to step up in the pocket and do his thing, but just too much pressure. Darren Tier offensive line for UTEP had a rough one. Rough one. Something from Dylan Gabriel that I think when he goes back into his tape session later on in the year, like this play is going to land. It's going, they're going to hit this for a big, big play, specifically if a defense is going to play them like this. Oklahoma couldn't get into 12 personnel. I Daniel Parker did not play. Um, don't know reasonings why or anything like that, but just there were an 11 personnel at the most the entire day. So uh, with that being said, Jaleel Farouk's motioning over from the X all the way over here inside. Um, but just watch how the safeties rotate. Rotates down. Looks to be in man coverage. So why I point that out. So Oklahoma's route combos here are over. It's coming over here. And then he's running an over route. He's got the fade. This is an old school, something you would have saw out of Baylor in the in the mid, early to mid 2010s. This is the kind of the route combination and people that see this. Yes. I hope I can improve uh, the product of this as it goes along, but work with me here. Um, so this is the combination you're looking at. They're going to go play action. And I'm surprised with him understanding the safety rotates, rotates down. If he doesn't kick back here off the snap, if this safety doesn't rotate back to the middle, there's no one back here. So whoever this slot receiver is, I don't know if that's Marvin Mims. But if that's Marvin Mims, that's a matchup I like a lot. And as you can tell, I think Marvin Mims liked it a lot too. So, ball is thrown into the double coverage. Pretty good offensive line protection. It's just kind of a little bit – I'm, I'm going to assume – this is something you're going to see Oklahoma land here at some point very soon. This is about the third time that Oklahoma's gotten into this bear front against uh, somewhat of a rushing down. It's been like third and short at times, but this one's second and two uh, in the, early in the second quarter. And they get into this bear front just to note for future games. Here comes Deshaun White at the line of scrimmage. This run was pretty successful for them. But just overall, 
UTEP's getting into – they got 12 personnel on the field, two tight ends, and Oklahoma gets into a better front. Here's the portion of this film review where I give a little shout-out to UTEP quarterback Gavin Hardison. This is a big boy throw. Oklahoma's going to drop into Tampa 2. The safety's going to kick back. He's going to kick back. He's going to kick middle. And he's going to play here. Imagine he's going to play somewhere in there. And he's playing a little bit off. And they made drops. Again, looks like they get into that bare front. They made drop here. But Hardison understands that. Ethan Downs is the one that drops this defensive end. But to understand that and then to still have the you-know-what to make a throw like this is pretty impressive. Because, like, that's a whole shot. Specifically, like, if this UTEP receiver, because of his responsibility, like, if these, these UTEP receivers running a route, like, nah, it's way too much. But if these UTEP receivers running a route down the middle somewhere, and he's just kind of running on the backside here. It's taking that that safety's responsibility away. And so Hardison understands that and just delivers an absolute dime. He had a good day. Tweeted it out. He got into the Michael Pratt category of, oh, my God, you were running for your life the entire day. And you still had some success. So you got my respect. The safety from UTEP, not going to be fun in the film room today as I'm recording this late, late Sunday night. The safety from UTEP is going to hate his life. Whichever this one is. So Oklahoma's, I'm pointing this out just because of this switch concept. So Oklahoma's going to run post here. And they're going to run a wheel. It's the third time they ran it so far in this game. We're almost all halfway. Or we are halfway through the second quarter. That safety just gets caught peeking in the backfield on play action. Look where Dylan Gabriel's eyes go. He's like, yup. It's pretty impressive that that safety about would have made a play on on the backside. This ball has got to be down more the middle of the field. But this is open. This is the second time that this is the third time they've ran this sort of concept so far the end zone view of this will be really pretty but everybody's seen this by now this play from ethan downs is pretty impressive look at the way he uses his hands it's just so damn strong hand fights still is able to push him back second guy tries to come over to knock him out and he still ends up getting the sack and just super impressive Man, when he gets his hands on you, super, super impressive. I'm sure they wanted to put this on tape for everyone to see. Here's a little peekaboo action. Look at the sideline. Looks like they're getting a check-in. Ball snapped, and they run a play. I'm sure they wanted to show this on tape. And there's your Y insert. And I'm glad I stopped it. I didn't even notice it. There's your Y insert. So he's going to insert inside. He's going to kick down, kick down, kick down. Braden Willis is going to kick inside. And, and there's going to be a free hitter there for the back. Should be. Unless one of these guys climbs to the second level. Center could be working up here. Guard there. Here. And he kicks in and kicks this guy out. And that's what it does. The center works up. Rain works up to the linebacker. This play, I'm telling you, is going to work for them really, really well in the Big 12 this year. Should. I'm pretty surprised that this was not a give. So kind of the same things we talked about earlier, right? So Braden Willis is located here. So this is the same. This comes from the same tree of concepts that Oklahoma, that they showed earlier in the game that I'm sure that they're going to run this year. Braden Willis was just started right here, and he motioned in 
there. But this is coming from the same tree. And they're also a running Y insert again here and as a run play. So these guys are kicking down. Braden Willis is kicking in, but it's an RPO. And why I say I was surprised that this wasn't a give is based on the location of this linebacker pre-snap. Earlier in the game when I showed that, they were lined up. He was over here. He was in the middle. And I think the safety was a deep safety, right? And so they're lined up a little bit different. And I'm surprised that Gabriel went back to this uh, and tried to get it again. When you, Again, when you look at the run fit, probably could have worked out. Good play, good process, good play call. I think they're going to use this quite a bit and do some different stuff like last time, right, where Braden Willis came in and it looked like they were going to run Y insert from over here, and instead it's on this side. UTEP just lines up a little bit differently. I bet he wish he could have had that back. He did get a good look at R. Mason Thomas, new freshman from Oklahoma. Uh, here they are again. That's Stripling and Thomas are on the field together. Uh, which is why I wanted to note this play um, because they are getting this person on the field. Look, same thing earlier, Jalen Redmond, Jordan Kelly, or Mason Thomas, Marcus Stripling. The staff has a plan. They're sticking to it and those packages. So you get two kind of Russians with two defensive tackles. And this is a really good rep uh, from R. Mason Thomas against a, a four-year guy at right tackle, Jeremiah Byers, who quite frankly kind of had his day on the right side of the line. So, this is a really good rep. Look at that rip here, and he gets up underneath. That's a freshman, man. That's a freshman. It's a really good rep. And then Gavin Hardison makes a hell of a throw. But note the personnel, the package. David Aguebu drops here. But look at the Russians and R. Mason Thomas. Really good swim move. Not swim move. Good Lord. It's too late. Uh, able to get his hand up in there. I'm not going to act like I know the exact phrasing of it or terminology, technique. Does a really good job getting his arm up in there. Really good pass rush. So I think this is a good time in the video to talk about this or in this week's video for over the UTEP game. I'm probably one of the things on my checklist moving forward is the amount of space and underneath on some of these routes. Um, this is going into halftime, 32 seconds. It's second and four. Um, they do give up some ground here. I just wanted to kind of talk more about about it in general um but obviously this is one of those plays that like stuck out to me going into half allowed a team to get potentially into field goal range um i do want to note at the top look at the pass rush from R. mason thomas man oh man that's a 19 year old just turned 19 like two weeks ago too by the way First play at a halftime. Kansas State's coming in two weeks. Got two tight ends into the boundary. A little concept here off play action gets open. Isaiah Coe, you can see with a good pass rush here on the center. Four center again had a rough day. But two tight ends on the field. They've tried a bunch of different stuff. We've seen th this is the third, fourth different look we've seen from them against it. This is just one of those. It's just a mental note. Kansas State comes in two weeks. Three weeks. First play for Oklahoma offensively in the second half. Guys, I'm just going to keep saying it. They're going to run Y insert a ton. They should. It's a really good concept. He's going to work to the backer. They're going to work together there. He's going to kick out. Braden Willis is going to kick inside. And they're going to run this a ton. Look how successful it's been for them against UTEP. And it's going to be even more successful of a concept whenever they tweak with it against, against some of the fronts that you're going to see in the Big 12, specifically almost every freaking team. Um, it's going to be a good play for them. Same drive. Here's that little pat. Little peekaboo looking at the sideline, snap the ball. And they run it with Y insert as well. I'm not going to have to keep designing it, but there it is. 
Billy Bowman has made some plays on this defensive drive, and I want to talk about Danny Stutzman. So I do think this is a pretty impressive play uh, in more ways than one. And I thought he had a pretty good day overall, considering I think the expectations for him kind of coming into the season. I think he's going like only going to get better for Oklahoma this year. But he's defending the RPO here. He's the person of conflict, right? If they're going to run an RPO, they want him to come forward. So he's defending the pass. And man, he triggers quick here and he delivers a blow. Defends the pass. And again, look at that center from UTEP. He he had struggled. First impressive play from Danny Stutzman. So for most of this drive here in the second half, uh, midway through the third quarter, pretty surprised at the amount of space that UTEP had to throw the football in. And this is one of those on third and six. And they picked some of these up in this game. This ball is completed most here in the future. They blitz, they get caught in it, which it happens under Venables. But I was pretty shocked with how open some guys were. So it's going to be hard to get to the very first part of this play. Kind of a little bit awkward, but I'm going to talk to you about it uh, right before we get going. So here they are stacked up again. This is a concept they ran at Ole Miss that they it had a lot of success, and there's some reasonings behind it. So it's a T-fold. So everybody, they're – the strawed out the left guard's blocking out blocking out he's kicking down he's kicking down and the tackle's folding inside so the tackle's pulling and he's up and getting up in there so what this does is that if a team's going to play defense against oklahoma with these concepts where they have these guys stacked on top of each other um that t fold is going to trigger it should trigger the safety to the play side right so he's going to come down and it should open up if you look at the way they're defending it up top here there should be someone that can get open on the backside or whatever. And you're going to see them hit that. They didn't try it on Saturday. They're probably hiding that or waiting for it, but it's going to come. This wasn't a bad run. And I know there's some people worry about the offensive line. Let's see what happens here in the next couple of weeks. I think it's way too early to make any decision and i don't know if we got the best of look from them on saturday or they all had some good moments they all had some bad moments it happens but this t-fold play is going to be something they'll use and they're going to run rpos off of it so they're running some screens here but they'll run some rpos off of it here we are again with this formation all against 11 personnel this time and they still got into it see where ethan downs is located at don't mean that this that they're going to be blitzing people or what they do here. They bring quite a few actually, and they get beat. But again, just noting formations, plays, packages, all that fun stuff. Not too worried about the result, though it is noticeable. Second and two, and they get into this bare front. 12 personnel, two tight ends. They get into a bare front. And this was basically, and I know this play only goes three or four yards. It felt like this was the only kind of time that they had success somewhat in the run game. Yeah, again, this is just third and four, just taking note of this stuff. This is just too much space. And this is the same concept that they'd been running all game for the most part, kind of out of this formation. Again, very basic vanilla playbook, not concerned about anything, where safety's filling here, the safety's rotating back, and he's rotating back. Just kind of creating somewhat of an illusion, but obviously there's a weak spot um, and there was in this game in that area, and they took advantage of that. This quarterback's not very good. It's not hard. Not hard. We'll end our first film review of the year with the interception at the end. There's really not a lot to show from it, but they'll just kind of talk throughout it. 
Um, thought it was clean game. I mean, got out of the game healthy. I thought they ran the ball well on early downs, which is something that is going to be very key for them. I think that's going to be the how we're going to be able to properly measure the strength of this offensive line. Uh, defensively, depth chart some stuff. Like, obviously, I want to – they had some packages in in this game, but um, see maybe some less rotation here in the next week, early specifically, mid second quarter and all that stuff. Um, and then just the third down spacing stuff and coverage. Outside of that, I thought it was a relatively good game, met to expectation, no complaints. Uh, just early on season stuff from a typical team that I think people expect uh, to look better and play better. Uh, and they, I think they will as the course of the season goes on. This was a great foundation um, and something to build off of, a great starting point for them uh, in the 2022 year. So for everybody watching this for the first time, if you made it this far into the video, thank you so much. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys next week.